Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today we are going to work on a really pretty bracelet using beads from our Softlex Company's uh, Design Challenge Kit Moroccan Bazaar. We're going to use that fancy little magnet closure and we're going to make a two strand bracelet. Let's turn down and I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, I have got the uh, Softlex Copper um, Color Metallica paint um, <laughs> beading wire out. I've got the um, magnetic clasp out. This one is so pretty. Then I have got the all of the arabesque beads. All but 10 of our little melons. We're gonna uh, color block these. I'll show you in just a moment. And I've got, where are they? I thought we put them in here. Huh. Strange. My crimp tubes appear to be gone, even though I would have swore I put them in with the package here. You're not stuck on here, are you? Nope. Strange. Well, I may have to go get some. But we're going to color block our little melon beads. Because, well actually when you get five of them out, and there's five of each color in our bunches here, they are about the same size as our arabesque beads. See, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and on one we're going to use four of the arabesque beads, and on the other side we're going to use three, and then we're going to color block. He's all separated into their proper colors here. orange. That's the deep pink. There's a purple. There's two of the oranges. So that's all the orange. This is the pale, paler pink here. We've got purple. And we've got yellow. And the darker pink. And then I have added a whole bunch of beautiful copper uh, daisy spacers. And they really aren't in here. I would have swore I put them in here, but I obviously didn't. So anyway, what we're going to do is it doesn't matter which bunch goes with which side of these. We're just going to grab a color. What we'll do is we'll just, I'll start out with the, we're going to put two of the daisy spacers on the ends on either side of which whatever we're working on and then we'll put three um, between each color block so we'll just grab two here and since I have these closest to me we're going to start with whatever color we want on this side, I think we'll go with, oh, I don't know, I think we'll go with the uh, blue. So just grab all five of these blue beads. One, two, three, four, and Five. Now the only way, because we're going to use all the arabesque beads, the only way we have for um, changing the length or whatever, if if it comes out and is too small, is or even too large, is to change how many daisy spacers we have in here. So right now we're putting three. That first one is two. Then we're going to put three. Then an arabesque.
three more of the daisy spacers. And then the next set of color. I think we'll go with green now, and when we get to the other side, we'll try and remember to go to yellow on that side. Now the three more daisy spacers. And the arabesque. Three more daisy spacers. And then our next color. Now I think on the other side we're going to go with the, the yellow between here, the orange here, and uh, maybe the um, dark pink there. So I think the next one we're going to do is going to be our pinks here, the paler pink. And three spacers. Our arabesque. Three spacers. Then we're going to do the purples. And then we have two spacers here. So there is one side. And then it will hook up to our magnet clasp on both sides. Now the other side is going to start with the arabesque. And then we'll have the color. And then the arabesques will go in here like so. Isn't that going to be pretty? Now I'm going to put a bead stopper on this side. I'm going to leave a couple of inches, two, three inches, just in case we need to extend it some slider down here. Put our other um, bead stopper here. Leave a few inches and then we're going to cut this so we can start our other side. 
So we'll just put this up here. And we're going to get some more wire out. Put the bead stopper on this side. And then we're going to do this opposite. We're going to start with two, two of the uh, spacers still. However, instead of starting with the little melon beads, we're going to start with the arabesque. Three spacers. And now we want our yellow melon beads. One, two, come on, three, three, four, and five. Now we want three spacers again. So let's get our three spacers on. One, two, three, there we go. And now we'll put up on our next arabesque. Slide her down. Now we want three spacers again. One. Come on, baby. Two and three. Now we'll go with the, three, the five orange melons. One. One, two. Two. Three. Four. And lastly, five. Then we got three spacers again. One, come on baby, go down on there. One, two, three, and our arabesque. Now three spacers again. One, two, three, our hot pink or dark pink, whichever you want to call it, melon beads. Five, three spacers. Two, three, the arabesque, and two spacers. Now we'll put another bead stopper on. Uh, come on, you guys, don't fall. Oh, right here, like we did the other side. Pull you over here. And now is one of our moments of truth. We want to see if we're matching up good as far as size is concerned. I'm going to have to take off the bead stoppers so I can tell better. Or make them go together, one or the other. Okay. Hmm, I think we're not quite there because something's not lining up right. Because this is middle point, it should be right here.
be very careful not to drop our bead strands here. Okay, down you go. Seems to be lining up pretty good, but Ugh, I didn't cut this off. I'm going to cut this wire off so I don't accidentally pull the strand over. Okay. If it's a different size, it's negligible. So I think we're good. So I'm going to put my bead stopper back on this side. Start getting our crimps on. So we'll take our magnet clasp and we'll put our crimp tube on. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can do crimp directly onto here or you can um, use jump rings. And I'm sort of wondering if it might be easier just to use some jump rings, but we'll see with this first one how it goes. Are you gonna go through that melon bead, baby? says no. Okay, so here is where we're going to crimp at. Well, unless you leave this a bit of space you're going to want to use a jump ring, I think, because if you push this up, then you're losing a lot of your mobility here. I think we're just going to crimp it here. Well, what do I want to do here? It actually might be easier just to crimp it and then put it on with jump rings because you're going to get a little tricky because you're doing two on a magnet on the clasp on either side. So um, let's just use a, um, just put these on and uh, leave a gap so we can. Um, use a crimp, I mean a jump ring to tighten them up. So I'm just going to pull this in to about where I want it. So we don't want a lot, we just need a little bit because we're going to use that jump ring to hold this in place. So we're just going to crimp this baby in. Now normally I would um, measure this out before I did all this, but maybe I will just do both of this side and then we will see about where it's landing as far as the bracelet's concerned. So over you go, baby. So that one is all crimped now. And we'll crimp our second side. Again, leaving a, a little loop. Now this one might go into the arabesque, whereas it didn't. It wouldn't go into the um, little melon beads.
I'd say that's a yes because it feels like it's in there already. There it is. So let's tighten this baby up to about where we want it. It's a little tighter than that. We want it to sort of match this side, though it can be a teeny touch bigger because remember, this side was just a hair's breadth larger than the other side. So now we will crimp this. Cut this extra wire off. Now we're going to roll all our beads over here to the other side. Cut this one obviously more than the other because we're Boop, 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 no coming off. Now I'm going to crimp them up or pull them close. That's closer than I want them. Let's get them a little bit further apart as far as the wires are concerned. Pull them up tight and close that up. So there's where we're going to sit. And as you can see, this one is a little bit, just a teeny bit shorter than the other one. So we've got to remember to make a slightly larger loop over here on this side when we put that one together. But we will get, yeah, some jump rings out here. And we're going to jump ring the one side onto our magnet. So we will get our jump ring open and we will start putting these two on this side. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. This little jump ring, this little clip is bigger than our jump ring. You see, it doesn't want to go in. So we're going to have to use bigger jump rings. So I have to get my large ones out. That's a pity those would have been perfect size. I suppose if I wanted I could get some round jump rings. I'm not much of a round jump ring fan anymore, but I could get some round ones out and it would make a difference. Hopefully these bigger ones won't make it my bracelet look bigger than I want it to be. If it does we'll get round ones and use round ones if we need to. Oops, come on, baby. Don't grab my pliers. There's one. The second one. Oops, I grabbed one of the littles. Now, when you put the other side on, once you've got it ready to go, you've got to make sure you're going to the right side of your magnet because it 
you've got the two, of course, so you want to make sure that when you power our, uh, come on, close up, baby, attaching the other side, that you attach it to the right, the proper side of your magnet. So as you can see, this definitely is longer now. So you can see this side is up a little higher. Now it's about that um, distance of that. See, it's not quite in the middle now. So it's now about the distance of that one. That one, uh, because see, we've got this stop grabbing things it's got this so it's a little sideways here this is straight now we're turning it we turned it just a little bit to see uh, to get hope oh, you can't see just a second I'll pull it over okay so if we we've got this even here we push this down over here and now we're up one just one, about one daisy spacer. But if we take off one, just one, we're uneven. So we don't want to do that either. So, so what I think we're going to do is we're just going to make the loop on this one just a little bit bigger and see if that works. So let's start by doing this one here, the one that needs to be a little bit shorter, and we will go through here. We remember it won't go through the melon beads, so bring her up, and we're going to bring this one pretty close because we don't want it to have a lot of excess space here because this one is the one that is the longer one. So. and cut it off. Well, cut off the extra wire. Definitely is longer. Now we no longer can take off any. Uh, spacers here because we've already got them off. Hold here. Now go over here. Push you down. One spacer is all it really needs, but one spacer is not going to be pretty. It's just, you can see it obviously. Let's see when if we put one spacer on, if that'll be enough. It'll sort of look like a mistake, but we got to do what we got to do. These aren't the ones I want. These are the brights. I want the 
There they are. I want the more antique color ones. Now, if it needs more than one, if it needs two, actually that would be good. We could, um, we'd have to restring this side, but we would get it evened out. So let's see what we got here. Mm. I think one is what we need. I could be wrong, but I think one is what we need. So we're just going to have one extra um, daisy spacer on this side. And I think that's what we're going to do. We wouldn't be able to put, if we put two in, I think it would be too much, and then we'd have to put another one somewhere on the other side, and we'd be playing that game forever. And I don't think we want to. Oh, now you were sliding quite well. Why did you suddenly stop? Come on, Arabesque. Where's your... Now I'll just get hold of it with my pliers and... Before we crimp this, let's see how we're looking. Oh goodness, I think we maybe could have used that one extra. Which means if we do, and I think we do, let's see. Come here, you. Straighten, 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 and here, you, you. We could use that one extra. So I'm going to pull this whole strand undone, and we'll um, put another one way down here on this end, too. Which is going to be fun, because I have it pretty well tightened up here. Just pull this all the way undone. Now we're going to be curly here at the end, but that's all right. Pull this whole strand off carefully. 
Well, we don't need to pull our um, the two uh, copper spacers that are already there off. We just need to add another one to the bunch. So, just add one more. And hopefully I won't go over the going the other direction now doing this. But if I do, then we'll just, we're going to stop playing. So we'll just restring this side up and get her proper. So just the same as we had it before, other than there's a little bit of kink in my wire because I go see now this one is going to have three instead of two with the ends get our three uh, spacers here it's awfully tight okay so we'll get her finished here There's our crimp. Now we will cut the excess wire off. And our bracelet looks to be pretty much the same length. Maybe, maybe the other ones. Are, yep, about the same. So now it's time to put the other side of our magnet on. Okay, I flipped the magnet, oh, the bracelet over so the magnet is on the opposite side here. So when we swing it around and come this direction, this one goes here and this one goes over here. So let's get these open. So we can hook those up. So through the... Now when we come around, this needs to go... Come on you. No coming out. Like... It needs to come so that this goes through like so. Magnet, let go of my pliers. Okay. Now this one should be wrapped properly. Oops, see, I did it backwards. See how it's, it's on the opposite side? of where we wanted it to be. Obviously wasn't paying attention, was I? More concerned with that silly magnet that kept undoing my things. So over onto this one. Now close it back up. Right now we're in there. So now we got to take this one and put it up here. 
So we'll undo this. And we will actually go through the magnet first so I get the right spot for sure. Now we'll bring it up and around and bring her through the loop in the wire and close her up. Whoa, come here. You're coming off. Knew it was. <laughs> okay, up and over. Up, up, twist yourself this direction onto the loop. Now we'll tighten it up. There we go. Now, as long as nothing's twisted, we should be good to go here. Wow, even those big ones don't want to slide really well on that. But there is our bracelet. It still feels like one arm of it might be a little bigger than the other. But let's get our sizer out. Drop her down. Well, one arm is about seven and a quarter. Well, it's about seven and a half all totaled out. And that's because of these big jump rings. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, get away without the big jump rings because of the um, big loops, unless we wanted to do it directly on to the loops, which we could have done. But um, I think it turned out pretty. I'm actually more a fan of the pinks over here on this side. Probably should have put those in the middle, huh? But it's all right. So then you just slide this to take it off because it doesn't want to come off otherwise. Go on, what are you doing here, ring? Now, see, now that side is bigger than the other side now, but it's, I believe, rather negligible. Once you've got it on, you really can't see it that much. And then, of course, we have the clasp here. Not sure I like the jump rings. Even with the big ones, they don't wanna move too much. I'm seriously considering switching to round ones, which is just bizarre for me because I don't really like round ones. But as you can see, it doesn't want to sit in its proper spot. Now this one, well, it's doing all right, but This one, there were two of them. I think it's this one. Doesn't want to move either. So, but, and I actually think we could use smaller ones if we used round ones. So I may go find some round ones and we'll switch those out for round ones. But there's our bracelet done for right now. Okay, amazingly enough, in our bargain bead box, we've got some round jump rings in a variety of sizes. I think the teeny, teeny ones are going to be too small, unfortunately, because that would be great. Um, 
not sure about this size. We will have to. So if not, we'll go to that size. So let's get out four of each size. This is the this is the teeny teeny. I think. Okay, first we'll see if this little tiny size works. If not, we'll go to that other size up there, over there. So let's take our pliers, undo this one. This is the one that keeps wanting to go sideways on us the most. So we will undo it, and we will check which of the jump rings works better. If that littler one will work, we'll use it. If not, we will um, use the next size up, which is those. The thing is, will it let these move? Um, I just need it to be big enough to move because it seems to have be sticking there and not have any movement in it. I don't think this this smaller size is going to work. It doesn't even want to go in and turn. Well, yes, it does. Well, let's see. Up and over, baby. In through. Close it up. Are you going to move all right there? Hmm. No, it's sticking like the other one did, I think. But it is sticking, and I don't like sticking. So we will take this one back off, and we will switch to this size. Your own. I always like to use the smallest jump ring that I can so we don't have a large signature there. Now see that one moved quite easily. That's more or less what we want it to do. Come on magnet, let my pliers move. Stop. Good Lord. There we go. Now see how much easier that one moves around. So we'll switch out all of these for these round ones. Ugh. always say I never use round ones unless I have to for some reason. Well, this is one of those instances. The oval ones are really lovely. I like them, but they just don't give our bracelet the movement that we want it to have because they're, they are sticking in the groove of the bracelet there, making it be a problem child. Okay, so, so 
this side has now got a lot more movement than the other side does. So the other side is not too bad right now, but I still think we're going to switch these all out to the rounds. It's becoming a really bit of a pain in the rear. Okay. And the, because these are rounds rather than ovals, this is actually probably going to make the bracelet just a little bit smaller. Okay, baby. This one is not closed quite all the way, so I need to work it a little bit, but the magnet is grabbing and giving us a little bit of a problem with the working. Come on, baby. Okay, I think it just made it. There we go. Now, as you can see, it has more movement because it's no, not catching on anything now. The oval isn't trying to stay in that spot where it's not letting it move at all. So I just twisted it up. Mm, over there. There we go. Let's see what it, if it's changed its sizing any when we switched. And yes, it did. See, it's, it's a teeny bit smaller now. Not too much, just a teeny bit. But there we go. There's our bracelet. Isn't that pretty? I think it turned out quite nicely. I like it. Like I say, when you want to take your magnet off, push sideways. And because it is a magnet, it's going to help you put it on because it's going to go straight for the other side. And see. Now, we also have a smaller signature here with the rounds. I think it turned out really pretty. I hope you like it. I like it. I think it's great. Even with all the changes I had to make, I still like it a lot. <laughs> and there's our bracelet. little ones we didn't use back in the package here. Well, we had a few starts and stops with this one. Add a little here, take a little bit off there. It did end up actually I think the one side still might be a bit longer, but not so much that it's really noticeable. And there is our bracelet. 
using the arabesque beads and all the all of those and most of the little melon beads with some copper spacers that I added and the beautiful magnetic clasp. The copper spacers are the only things I added from my stash. Well, the little round jump rings as well. But mainly, everything came from the kit. Isn't that pretty? So this bracelet was made with the Softlex design kit, uh, challenge kit, um, Moroccan Bazaar. And I really like it. I think it turned out very pretty. I hope you enjoyed making this with me. This has been Rose from In Rose's Garden, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.